external hard drives and RAID configurations are nothing new. However, combining them into a single tangible object is a lot more uncommon. That's why when I came across the OWC Mercury Elite Pro Dual Mini, yeah, that's a mouthful, I was intrigued. This device gives you the above average experience from both worlds in a fairly compact design with extremely good build quality. Gone are the days of having to decide between portability and data security with this bad boy. And if all of that sounds pretty cool, well, it's because of this. Let's talk about it. So this is it, the OWC Mercury Elite Pro Dual Mini, or as we will now refer to it as the MEPDM. OWC, you did this to yourself. It's an $80 external hardware RAID device that allows you to fit two 2.5 inch SATA drives up to four terabytes each. There's also four different configurations this can run in, RAID 0, RAID 1, SPAN, and Independent. RAID 0 will strike both drives together, giving you the full capacity, as well as giving you increased speeds, However, it's going to be more prone to data loss. RAID 1 is going to mirror the drives, effectively having your storage, but it'll give you one drive worth of failure tolerance. SPAN allows you to use two different size drives and essentially create one volume out of it, kind of like RAID 0, but without the increased speeds. And independent as well, independent. It's gonna see each drive as its own drive. The MEPDM connects to your host device over a 10 gigabit per second USB-C 3.1 Gen 2 connection. They also include a USB-A to USB-C adapter for those of you that are stuck in the 1840s, as well as a DC power adapter for if you choose to use more power hungry hard disks where your host can't supply enough power over USB-C, this will come in handy. The MEPDM has an all aluminum chassis and weighs in at 1.25 pounds and looks extremely solid with amazing build quality and is sure to turn heads when you whip it out at your local Starbucks. The front of the device boasts a nice looking mesh grill which also helps to provide some ventilation for your hard drives. And around the back we will see our I.O. which is our DC power input, an on off switch, USB-C, set button, and our mode selection switch. All in all, this thing ticks all the boxes for, well, who is this really for? And what boxes are they ticking? Now, I immediately thought of two solid use cases for this device. Content creators who do a lot of their work away from the office, so photographers and cinematographers. Oftentimes when you're out shooting a project, you don't have access to your high capacity storage and redundancy that you would in your home office. So this would immediately be an upgrade. Sure, you can install all your footage on an external hard drive like this, but this is a single drive, and if this goes, your footage goes. But you still have your originals, you say. Well, unless you have extremely high capacity SD cards that can last for days or weeks worth of shooting, you're gonna have to clear those off so you can keep using them. Look, I know there's multiple solutions for keeping your data safe as there often are, but this makes it simple. Just throw two high capacity SSDs or hard disks in there and just like that, you have a RAID 1 configuration set up and ready to go. Okay, so what's the other use case? I can see this being a solid solution for a small backup system in your home lab. So for people who never leave the house. The MEPDM will allow you to create a RAID 0 configuration for faster storage or a RAID 1 configuration for redundant storage and pretty much be a damn near plug and play experience including using it on a Raspberry Pi Open Media Vault NAS. Video coming soon. Sure, it's less configurable than software RAID and you're only limited to two drives and you can only get four terabytes each and you can only use 2.5 inch drives and blah, 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 blah. Look, nerd, you're paying for convenience and it certainly does that well. If this isn't the device for you, well, here's a secret. You don't have to buy it. I know there's other use cases for it out there, but those were the two that came to mind. So yeah, it has some use cases, cool. But how does it perform? Well, pretty good with one strange issue, but I'll get to that in a bit. You can check the product page for a list of max speeds under different circumstances, but I'm gonna share with you the speeds and performance that I got in my personal tests. For the test, we'll be using two of these one terabyte Crucial MX500 drives, and I ran a simple speed test in all four configurations, 
and you'll see the results listed here. In RAID 0, we got read speeds of 852 megabytes per second with write speeds of 945 megabytes per second. And for RAID 1, span and independent, we got pretty similar results with the read speed sitting around 490 megabytes and write speed sitting around 500 to 520. My immediate reaction is, well, that's what I expected. In RAID 0, you're gonna get pretty near two times the performance of a single drive. In RAID 1, you don't get that increased performance and your capacity is essentially halved, but if one drive goes, then you still have access to all your media. Span and independent are only accessing one disk at a time, so those results are pretty obvious. So yeah, it all makes sense. So what's the issue then? Well, all these tests were ran on my Windows machine with the XFAT file system, and I know a lot of you out there use Windows, but some of you don't. A lot of you may be part of the Apple crew, and for you guys, I have some potential bad news. When I ran the same tests on my M1 MacBook Air, the results were much worse, and even stranger, no matter what configuration I ran it in, the performance was exactly the same. No matter what file system I used or how I formatted it, I was limited to about 350 to 400 megabytes read and around 200 to 300 megabytes per second write, which by itself is lower than what a single drive should be getting, and when I ran it in RAID 0, same results. I initially thought it could be an issue with the solid state drive as I was using these older silicon power drives, but the same thing was happening with the Crucial MX 500s. Now I don't know if this is an issue with the MetDM or if it's an issue with Mac OS or more specifically with the M1 chip, but all I can do is report on my personal experience and this is what I experienced. So overall, I think this is a solid option given the price and the alternative options out there. Sure, we got some strange results with the MacBook, but to be honest, I feel like a lot of people buying this are gonna be using it in RAID 1, where you're not really expecting increased performance. And while the performance on the Mac wasn't great, it's still not far away from what we experienced on the Windows machine in RAID 1. That being said, if you plan on using this in a Windows machine, then it goes from a solid consideration to a great consideration. We nearly saturated the 10 gigabit USB connection on our write speeds in RAID 0. So if you're looking for really fast external storage without having to break the bank on NVMe drives, this guy will tickle your fancy. So if you're considering buying one of these, an affiliate link to this product is listed down below in the description. So if you go there and check it out and decide to buy one, it'll help me out and it will get you your product at no extra cost. But that's all I have for you today. Let me know down in the comments if you could use something like this or what you would even use it for. I'd be curious to know. But if you like this video, please drop a like below. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing. A link to the Discord is also in the description below if you wanna come hang out and nerd out with the Radal community, the more the merrier. If you got this far in the video, I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.